playing defense. That's playing not to lose. Or I'm not going to buy that so I can play my win. Pay my rent. That's playing not to lose. That's an example right there. You know what I'm saying? But let's look at Let's read this. Y'all ready, chat? Rich people play the money game to win. Poor people play the money game to not lose. Are y'all ready, chat? Are y'all ready? The ass is done. We good. So you save into the point where you can get both. You, well, you want to always be saving, but you, you should probably make more money or, you know, position yourselves to be able to afford the things that you want to buy. In comfortable means. The idea of just saving and saving and saving until you go just buy something. Like, it's like, it's like just constantly filling the bucket and dump it, filling the bucket and dump it. Like, that, that, that is not the most ideal situation. Okay, all right, let's keep going. Who I just put that yawn in my head, bro. Poor people play the money game on defense rather than offense. Let me ask you, if you were to play any sport or any game strictly on defense, what are the chances of you winning that game? Most people would agree, slim and none. Yet, that's exactly how most people play the money game. Their primary concern, y'all, random thought, random thought. I was in one of my classes. We were talking about the Eagles. And this girl asks, what would happen in a football game if both teams didn't score? My God, like I just had to say that that was the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. But I just, I just wanted to, I just wanted to like just say that random thought. We start talking about what would happen if a, if you both teams only play defense. Then um, that just popped up in my head. Her saying that we all looked at her like, <laughs> yeah, yet yeah, that's exactly how most people play the money game. Their primary concern is survival and security instead of creating wealth and abundance. So what is your goal? What is your objective? What is your true intention? The goal of truly rich people is to have massive wealth and abundance, not just some money, but lots of money. So what is the big goal of poor people? To have enough money to pay the bills and on time would it be a miracle. Again, let me, remind, let me remind you of the power of an intention. When your intention is to have enough to pay bills, that's exactly how much you'll get. Just enough to pay the bills. And not a dime more. Middle class people at least go a step further. Too bad it's a tiny step. Their big goal in life also happens to be their favorite word. Excuse me, to be their favorite word in the whole wide world. Excuse me, they just want to be comfortable. I hate to break the news to you, but there's a huge difference between being comfortable and being rich. I hate, I have to admit, I didn't always know that. But one of the reasons I believe I have the right to even write this book is that I've had the experience of being on all three sides of the proverbial fence. I've been extremely broke as in having no, as in having to borrow a dollar for gas for my car. Just imagine when gas was a dollar or less than a dollar per gallon. But let me qualify that. First, it wasn't my car. Second, that dollar came in the form of four quarters. Do you know how embarrassing it is for an adult to pay for gas with four quarters? The kid at the pump looked at me as if I were some kind of vending machine robber and then just shook his head and laughed. I don't know if you can relate, but it was definitely one of my financial low points and unfortunately just one of them. Bro, you ain't never had roaches falling out your cereal, nigga. And it ate the roaches for extra protein. Talk about some goddamn four quarters, bro. Nigga, I'd be lucky if I found two on the couch. I'd be lucky if I could use a car. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep going, chat. Once I got my act together, I graduated on the level of being comfort. Comfortable is nice. At least you go out to decent restaurants for a change. But pretty much all I could order was chicken. This guy's crazy. Now, there's nothing wrong with chicken if that's what you really want, but often it's not. 
In fact, people who are only financially comfortable usually decide on what to eat by looking at the right-hand side of the menu, the price side. What would you like for dinner tonight, dear? I have this $7.95 dish. Let's see what it is. Surprise, surprise, it's the chicken for the 19th time this week. Well, it's not always true because you got, you, got you got a lot of rich people who are very uh, cost conscious and aware. So I would actually challenge this point that he's making. But the point he's making is that you can, you can spend recklessly if you really wanted to. When you're comfortable, you don't dare allow your eyes to look at the bottom of the menu. And if you did, you might come across... Hold on, I got to turn off the uh, noties. Hey, Ghost Girl, what's up, twin? Big eight months in the motherfucking Smiling building, baby. Eight months, twin, less than three. I appreciate you. We got 123 subs today, man. I love y'all. Let's keep going, chat. When you're comfortable, you don't dare allow your eyes to look at the bottom of the menu. For if you did, you might come across the most forbidden words in the middle class dictionary. Market price. And even if you were curious, you'd never ask what the price actually is. First, because you know you can't afford it. Second, it's downright embarrassing when you know the waiter doesn't believe you when he tells you the dish is $49 with side dishes extra. And you say, you know what? For some reason, I have a real craving for chicken tonight. I have to say that for me personally, one of the best things about being rich is not having to look at the prices on the menu anymore. I eat exactly what I want to eat regardless of the price. I can assure you I didn't do that when I was broke or comfortable. It boils down to this. If your goal is to be comfortable, chances are you'll never get rich. But if your goal is to be rich, chances are you'll end up mighty comfortable. Y'all remember I read you that quote? One of the principles we teach in our programs is, if you shoot for the stars, you'll at least hit the moon. To the moon, baby. Poor people don't even shoot for the ceiling in their house. And then they wonder why they're not successful. Well, they just found out. You get what you truly intend to get. If you want to get rich, your goal has to be rich. Not to have enough to pay the bills. And not just to have enough to be comfortable. Rich means rich. And then at the end they do a declaration. But that, that's the end of that chapter that they talked about. Um, and then the next one was people, poor, rich people are committed to being rich. Poor people want to be rich. It's probably going to go into like, you know, different habits and different decisions um, that they make to commit to being rich. You know. Uh, what book is you reading? That was uh, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. 